Well, good afternoon, everyone. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Uh, it was good to have uh, the guys have a weekend off, try to recharge a little bit mentally and physically. Uh, we're back at it uh, with a normal week of prep, um, normal stuff, and, and we'll be on the grass fields um, first half of this week. So um, we'll see the guys at uh, 240 today. I know Coach True saw them this, this morning, and, and uh, guys were excited about getting back to work. We know it's going to be a big task going to Colorado. Uh, we got to continue on from our game planning last week and um, really hone in on a lot of the details of the game plan this week. Coach, um, based on what happened over the weekend, are you glad you picked? You didn't really pick this as an off week, but it fell in your lap to have an off week. Um, it was uh, an interesting Saturday for sure, uh, and uh, <clears throat> some of that is just what college football is right now with great parity and you better come ready to play and you better have your A game. And, and there's a lot of really good teams out there that people don't know about uh, that uh, have really good talented players. And, um, you know, you just look at our league, um, there's some teams that won on the road. And um, those are those are huge wins when you get them on the road. And so um, you just across the landscape, there was a lot of top 25 teams that uh, – um, either didn't play their best or or give the the opponent credit they played well. Have a little bit to look at Colorado. What are your biggest concerns with the Buffaloes? Um, there's a lot of concerns that we have. Obviously, go to the offensive side, and and um, I think Sanders will be the first quarterback picked off the board. He should be um, in in the in the film that I've seen of of a lot of the top guys. I think he's. Uh, an excellent thrower. You can't really confuse him. I've seen a lot of different teams uh, try to manipulate coverage and, and disguise, and he does a really good job pre-snap to post-snap. Um, and he can make all the throws and uh, has a lot of guys to throw the football to. Uh, and then on defense, they're going to be aggressive. Uh, you, you, we're going to see probably a lot of man coverage and some pressure, and so we have to be able to win in man coverage, and we have to be able to find ways to run the football. Chris, what was the best thing that happened to your team during the bye week, you think? Um, getting the guys that have been here five and six years uh, a break, um, the amount of reps that they had taken since the, the first of August or the or the end of August when we started playing games, the guys that have been around that everybody knows about, um, we, we practiced those guys, but we were really smart with those guys and didn't have them uh, out on the grass as long uh, to try to get their bodies recovered uh, because they've played a lot of snaps of football. And then on the flip side of that, our opportunity to work with a lot of younger players, whether they're freshmen or, or pretty young or new to the program, um, to develop those guys. And that development development isn't necessarily for 2025. It's to develop them um, when we do have that need uh, this season. Travis Hunter is obviously unusual in that he plays both ways. From your perspective, when's the last time you looked at a player and thought he could he could play Iron Man football? Um, just doesn't happen a lot right now. Um, there's probably a, a handful of guys, not not a ton. There's probably a handful of guys that that could do that, um, but to do it at the high level, we talked about that last week. He's doing it at such a high level on both sides of the ball, um, and and playing fast on both sides of the ball, and and it's a uh, it's really impressive to watch. Um, because he's making plays uh, in, in both phases and, and big-time plays. Um, he's not a role player on either side. He's a dynamic impact player on both sides. The quarterback, is his ability to run and extend plays? I mean, he seems to be a very good scrambler. Yeah. How much of a challenge does that present to it, you? It is. I mean, we have to have really good rush lanes. Um, you know, he um, – is going to scramble, in in my opinion, to throw and does a tremendous job of keeping his eyes downfield. But he's he's athletic enough that when he does scramble to run, um, he can hurt you. And so, you know, for us, it's it's going to be really good rush lanes as well as being able to um, collapse zones uh, or stay with our man when we're in man um, and try to give him some different looks. Did the off week kind of help Uso's situation? Um, we're encouraged by it. Once again, we didn't. He didn't do anything last week other than stuff with rehabilitation and, and things with Coach True. Um, haven't seen him yet today, but uh, got a report that it was it was promising. Um, and so we hope to have him back this week. Now, will that be in a full time role or in a limited role? That is to be determined as how the week goes. But 
Last week at this time, I'd have said there's no chance that he plays. Now I think there's a really good chance he's going to be able to play. Obviously, you guys didn't see Colorado last year. They struggled a lot defensively. They seem much improved on that side this season. What's kind of the biggest thing that you've seen that they are doing better than, than last season? I didn't watch them last season, so I, I, I can't answer that question. Um, as the season has gone this year, they've, uh, uh, I think, understood each other. Um, obviously, just like everybody else, there's new players. Every, every team has new players, and these new players um, – have gelled and I think they're playing really well right now. I thought they um, played extremely fast uh, and physical and were aggressive uh, against B against uh, Baylor and then against UCF. Um, and those are the most I think the two most recent games one at one at home and one on the road. And, and that's the thing is is I thought they were playing really physical and really at a high level both home and away and, and are gaining a lot of confidence on defense. Just the fan environment in Boulder is, is pretty notorious for being one of the tougher to deal with. Do you bring is, – is this a situation where you try to bring in a, a guy that, that played against Colorado back when they were playing to kind of talk to the kids? Um, no, not, not, not in particular. Um, you know, we, we have to do a really good job with our preparation. we got to do a really good job creating noise uh, at practice. we got to do a really good job with, with tremendous focus. Um, I know it's going to be a tough environment. It's a night game. It's uh, two really good teams um, that uh, um, it's going to come down to who can do the simple things, protect the football, who can um, win on third down, who can win in the red zone, all the things that typically determine games. Do you have any lessons or takeaways from how the late kick in Provo went that you can use this week? Um, a little bit, yeah. A um, couple of things that we're going to adjust on Friday night. Um, there's only so many things you can do based on um, departure times of planes and, and uh, the sunlight and so forth. But uh, we're doing a few things uh, on Friday uh, and Saturday to adjust uh, a few things just on the, on the uh, more what we're doing with the guys, whether we're up on our feet or watching film or getting them away from it too. So we're, we're, we've already we just met on that today. Um, we have a couple of different adjustments we're making to both Friday and Saturday, but it still comes down to blow that whistle uh, and what you do between the white lines and are you prepared and, and do you make great decisions and, and do you play really fast. Excuse me. I think people think Colorado's offense is just Travis Hunter and Shador, but they have three or four wide receivers yeah. who have contributed this year. Uh, what have you seen from those guys and, and what challenges do they present? I, I think they're really balanced, honestly, and they've they've rushed the football well too. Um, and uh, yeah, you, he's, Shadur throws it to the guy that's open and, and reads coverage and knows where he's going with the football. And if it happens to be Travis Hunter, uh, it happens to be have Travis Hunter. I think the Horn kid's phenomenal football player. Um, and, and they have other wide receivers and backs that can hurt you. So, you know, for us, it's not like you're going to say, boy, we're going to put all our, our, our thoughts into one guy or put everything into the run game or everything into the pass game. We have to have tremendous balance on defense um, and be able to play the run when we're short and be able to play the pass when we have to load the box. I mean, there's um, nobody knows how this game is going to go, so we have to – the same thing. We have to have great fundamentals and techniques to whatever. I mean, there's going to be some new stuff too, you know, that we haven't seen. So we have to do a great job of applying our rules and principles and playing really fast with the new things that we see, uh, as well as some of the things that maybe are the staple of their offense. You guys have had success on offense uh, on those early drives, those, those drives that to some degree are scripted and mm -hmm. to some degree are just the first few drives of the game. How important, how important, excuse me, are those scripted drives to? I guess finding out tells of a defense and how important is it to get points on those drives? Yeah, it's imperative that you get points because the possessions are such a premium in general. Whether it's your first drive or your fifth drive, possessions are getting um, shorter. You know the amount of possessions you get, and and uh, uh, I've been pleased uh, the last few weeks we've been able to to manufacture points um, on the first uh, drive of the game. We'd like to always get touchdowns, but uh, sometimes defenses. Um, throw a wrinkle at you or, or a kid makes a play. But uh, I, I've been pleased with what we're doing offensively um, to start games. Now we just have to continue to sustain it like we did uh, last two weeks ago against Oklahoma State. Coach, do you recall the last time you played for a player like Travis Hunter? 
I don't know. Th- I'm sure that not that we've I've not played somebody that's played both ways all the time. I mean, there was a couple times where the guy played a little bit, but not not the way he's doing it. No. Coach, I'm curious about the running game. It seems like you've really had some good success this year, and uh, why is that? Well, DJ Giddens for starters, um, and the threat of Avery, um, the threat of Dylan, because there's some times where we're jetting Dylan across and everybody's paying attention to it, and it opens up uh, some alleys for DJ. And then our offensive line and tight ends are doing a really good job, and um, they're an, uh, an older group, but a new group together, and, and it's taken a little bit for those guys to gel. Uh, I think they're they're gelling. Uh, we're blocking well in the perimeter with wide receivers, so it, it's a collective group. To say it's just one person, you can never do that. It's a collective group of people um, that uh, are gaining some confidence, and and we have to continue to be balanced as an offense, but. Uh, the only way you're balanced is by eight, being able to do the first thing, which is rush the football. It seems like, I mean, obviously running the football has kind of become a little bit of, of identity. Is that halfway through the season? Is that is that about right? Yeah, I mean, our identity is 31 right now, you know. Um, uh, and as he goes, it opens up everything else. Uh, and that's why – you know, Avery's been six, more successful throwing the football because we're able to rush the football, um, and uh, everybody. It just it, it opens up everything if you can if you can run the football. And uh, uh, I, I assume that they're going to play a lot of guys in the box and and try to take DJ away. And then somebody somebody else is going to have to step up, whether it's in the throw game or somebody else uh, rushing the football. But uh, you, know, you know, we're always looking for our identity, um, and, and for us, it's it's. You know, finding the ways to to win on the perimeter with the guys that we have, finding the ways to um, get Avery some some really good looks in the pocket, out of the pocket, and then the ability to rush the football with a variety of guys. I was curious about the scout team guys and the work that they hopefully accomplished in the past week. Can you maybe highlight a little bit of that? Yeah, um, we did some – group work where we showed some Colorado pictures offensively and defensively, but then we did quite a bit of K-State versus K-State and those young guys or maybe guys that are playing only on special teams getting a chance to uh, truly get coached on on K-State football. And so we were able to do that three straight days for, you know, a good 30 minutes a day probably. Um and getting those good pictures and, and being able to have those kids be able to watch that film and evaluate, um, you know, maybe what their retention is from fall camp, which I think is a big thing, uh, as well as, you know, are they getting better at, at their technique? And uh, I thought it was spirited. I thought we had a good good day. It was pretty even uh, throughout the three days with offense and defense winning. So I thought it was it was a fun time for us coaches. And I know those those players that have been on scout team really enjoyed it. Wondering about Braden Lofton, what's uh, his Yeah, status? I doubt if Braden will be available this week. I, I don't think that um, – I think we're, we're probably a, a, another week or so away. We're, we're still hopeful, but um, I, I don't want to say for sure he's playing because he still has to pass a few more tests. Anything else? Yeah, Um, yes. Uh, and I know he's excited about the opportunity. I know he was excited uh, about, uh, his time there. Uh, he has a ton of friends there. Um, a lot of those teammates, uh, were his brothers and, and, and that's what college football is right now. Coaches do that as well as players. Uh, and, and so it's always probably, um, a, a little bit more special when you, when you have a, a relationship with that previous school, whether you're a player or a coach, but uh, um, same thing. It uh, is once that game starts, it's in between the white lines and, and you've got to beat your opponent just like you do in practice. And, and so um, I'm, I'm excited for him. He's playing really well and uh, he's healthy, he's fresh, uh, and, and we've got to find ways to utilize him. 
young guys who really impressed you with some extra opportunities? Yeah, I – I don't have any names for you, Kellis. It, it just was it was uh, good to see a lot of guys. I, Blake Barnett, it was fun to watch because we missed him during the spring. You know, he missed all of spring football. And so for him to truly uh, get an opportunity, because he just first learned the offense in, in uh, fall camp, for him to now run scout team and then play quarterback and do K-State stuff, uh, that was fun for us to see. So we saw some really good things out of Blake. But that was fun just because we hadn't – had really had a chance to see that yet.